and I've been a restaurant manager for five years now. Since then, I put several people through the shift management training program. As with most of our training programs, the shift management program relies on the coach to help the new shift manager get through the program. In the management development program for shift managers, also known as MDP1, there is a coach guide. This guide helps you monitor and support the shift manager trainee through the training program by providing suggested training and meeting schedules for each topic, answers to the exercises and nuts and bolts assessments, directions for shoulder to shoulder activities. It's a great resource and you'll need to be familiar with it before you start coaching. The coach guide will give you details, but today I'm going to get you started by giving you an overview of the program and some ideas for how you can better coach trainees through it. Think of me as your talking coach guide. Let's get started by taking a look at each part of the program. The first step of the shift management program is completion of the station and trainer verifications. Use these to make sure the trainee has a basic understanding of operations and the skills needed to train other crew before they begin learning how to run a shift. The components for this part of the training are training and SOCs for the crew development program, maintenance verification, and crew trainer verification. As the coach, you will check to make sure all of these are complete. Next, the shift manager trainee begins transition to management at McDonald's. The goal of this training is to introduce the trainee to McDonald's and the responsibilities of being a shift manager. Using the transition to management workbook and a video, they will also learn basic people skills. A nuts and bolts assessment is completed at the end of the workbook. The next topic, area management, focuses on managing the production, front counter, and drive through areas. After completing the MDP exercises, nuts and bolts assessments, and shoulder to shoulder activities with you, the trainee must be verified managing these areas before starting the next topic. In the shift management section, the trainee learns about managing the entire process, pre-shift, managing the shift, and post-shift. They also learn about food safety and safety and security procedures. This section includes a video, exercises, shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder activities, and the nuts and bolts assessment. As the coach, you will work with the trainee two to three shifts per week to prepare them for verification. You will then conduct the shift management internal verification. It is also your responsibility to set up the external shift management verification with your owner operator or supervisor. After completing all of the workbooks, the trainee attends Serve Safe or equivalent food safety training. Then, after completing food safety training and course pre-work, trainees will attend Basic Shift Management class, also known as BSM. The goal of BSM is to prepare a shift manager to create a positive work environment in the restaurant that supports delivering outstanding QSC to our customers. The course focuses on how to manage people, customer satisfaction, and the shift for QSC. During class, trainees create an action plan that will serve as a guide for applying their new skills back at the restaurant. Once all the requirements have been successfully completed, the trainee is officially a shift manager. Another component of the MDP focuses on the shift manager's development process. This process is a continuation of the trainee's performance work plan and individual development plan with the emphasis now on the functional competencies for a shift manager. So now that you know what the trainee will learn, let's talk about how to coach them through it. To be successful, the shift manager trainees must take the skills and knowledge learned in training and apply them to their job. As the coach, you have the responsibility for making sure the trainee applies the new skills and knowledge correctly. The coach guide is organized to help you accomplish this. Remember, 
you will need to schedule your time as well as the trainee's time for training meetings. These are the steps in the training process. Conduct an initial meeting to discuss the overall training program and create a plan for completing the shift management training program. For each individual topic, meet to introduce the topic and set the schedule for working through it. Schedule the trainee for time off the floor to read and complete the exercises in their workbook. Schedule time for both you and the trainee to review exercises and answer questions they may have. Schedule time for both you and the trainee to complete shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder training activities. Conduct verifications. Your coach guide explains when and how to do each of these in detail. You also need to display good coaching skills. These are probably familiar to you. In fact, your trainees learn about them during BSM. Here are some things to keep in mind. Develop trust by doing what you say you will do and supporting them through the training. Provide constructive feedback in private. If you don't know the answer to a question, let them know that you will find the answer and get back to them. Then follow through. Clarify what you expect of the trainee and make sure they understand what you are asking of them. Give appreciative and constructive feedback. Motivate and inspire. I guess the best way to introduce you to this process would be to show you how it's done. Let's take a look at Betty, a first assistant, and how she conducts her first coach meeting with Adam, our shift manager trainee. Adam, I'm excited about your shift management training. I know you're going to do a great job. Oh, thanks, Betty. I'm excited, too. I can't wait to get started. I'll be your coach during the training. There are two main components to the training program, working through the workbooks in this binder and attending the classes. While you're working through the workbooks, I will meet with you at various points to answer questions and review your work. What else can I expect? Well, we will do some shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder activities together to help you learn specific... It's important to start the trainee off on the right foot. Betty made sure she scheduled time to meet with Adam, inspired him by sharing her excitement, and made sure that Adam understood the expectations for completing the program. During this meeting, she also took the time to set up a schedule for the first part of Adam's training. Before the trainee begins each section in the MDP, you will meet to review goals, key concepts, and learning objectives. During the meeting, set a training schedule that includes the shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder activities, reviewing workbook exercises and progress checks, and verifications. Let's watch how Betty introduces the transition to management at McDonald's workbook to Adam. Adam, now that you have completed your station and trainer verification, we are ready to begin the transition to management at McDonald's section. As a McDonald's manager, I expect you to learn the basic people skills so that you can lead the crew during your shift. You are also the hospitality ambassador to crew and customers. This workbook contains the reading and written exercises you need to complete. You'll also need to watch the basic people skills video. Then you'll shadow James for a complete shift. He is one of our top shift managers. And we'll meet to review your work and I'll answer your questions. Okay, I get it. So I'll read these pages and I'll complete the exercises. Then I'll work a shift with James to see how it's really done. And then you and I will meet again. Mm -hmm, that's right. Oh, and make sure that you write down any questions that you have as you're working through the workbook and you're completing the exercises. We'll discuss them when we meet. Now, of course, I'm here to help you and to answer any questions that you have at other times, too. I've arranged for you to work Monday shift with James and have given you extra hours to work on your MDP. How does that sound? Pretty good. I do have one question, though. How do I know how to manage the crew? Well, let's look at the objectives in this workbook and discuss how the training can help you with that question. Shattering James will also help to give you an idea, and I can give you some examples from my own experience. Okay. So, let's take a look at After you topic. introduce each topic, the trainee will begin reading the workbook and completing required activities. Each workbook contains both exercises and nut and bolt assessments. Many of the exercises require the coach to discuss the topics and ask the trainee about their responses. Make sure you schedule time to meet with the trainee and discuss these. This follow-up is important to gauge the trainee's understanding. For both the exercises and the nuts and bolts assessments, 
you'll want to make sure that the trainee gets most of the answers correct. If they don't, provide them with the resources they need to review, then ask them to retake the assessment after they study the resources. The suggested answers are in the coach guide. Let's take a look at how Betty demonstrates this. Adam, you have been completing your work on time and demonstrating a good understanding of the information in this workbook. Well, thanks. I'm learning so much about how to manage a shift. I can see your improvement over the last few weeks. Today I want to review the exercises in the Area Management Workbook. Let's start out by first taking a look at any questions that you might have had while completing the workbook. Okay, well I had a question about the what's first exercise actually. Okay. Well, how did you categorize the situations? Well, uh, I responded by saying cups and lids that need to be restocked. Well, that prevents prompt service. Mm -hmm. uh, the garbage is overflowing. Well, that affects the appearance of the restaurant. And a customer that is complaining about cold fries. Well, that's related to quality of product. <laughs> that's right. And which one would you handle first? I would, I would ask a crew member to handle the restocking while I would go and speak with the customer. That way, two problems are being handled quickly. Then I would ask a crew member to empty the garbage. I think you have done a good job thinking this through. Through this meeting, Betty determines that Adam understands the concepts presented in this section. This is important to verify before proceeding further. Betty encourages and provides positive feedback to Adam. In addition to reviewing exercises and nuts and bolts assessments with the trainee, you will conduct shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder training activities to teach a specific procedure or skill. As you conduct the shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder training, explain what you are doing and why you are doing it so that the trainee has a clear understanding. Make sure the trainee knows that you are there to help and that they will improve with practice. Give specific constructive feedback. Refer to your coach guide for activity directions. Let's watch Betty conduct a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder activity from the shift management section. Let's go over how you ran that shift. To give us an idea of how we did compared to targets, let's take a look at the KBS, drive through and front counter reports. This discussion will help us get an idea of how we can make it even better next time. And don't worry, we'll do this several times a week for the next two to three months, so you'll have plenty of time to practice what you've learned. That's good. So, let's talk about how it went. Overall, what do you think went well today? Well, I think the kitchen area went pretty well. And so did service, until I sent my fry person away. Can you restock the cups at the front counter, please? Thanks. Wasn't a great idea. We got stuck without any fries. How do you think you could have handled that differently? First thing I might do is keep my fry person, or at least check positioning on the other crew to make sure that if I do take over, I wouldn't get stuck there. And also, I... You know. Shoulder to shoulder training is a great time to practice good coaching skills. Specifically, Betty encourages Adam and puts him at ease by making sure he knows they will work together to improve Adam's performance. She also tells him that he will improve with practice. Betty also asks Adam questions to verify his understanding. And when they look at how Adam did compared to his targets, Betty will provide him with very specific constructive feedback. Shoulder to shoulder activities aren't one time events. You'll need to schedule time to repeat the shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder training with the trainee until they can demonstrate that they can do the activity themselves. Some topics require verification of performance before going forward. You conduct the verifications to measure the trainee's skills and knowledge and application to the job. Okay, Adam, today I'll be conducting your shift management verification. Yesterday we met to set the targets. Right, and I just reviewed the targets and I completed my pre-shift travel path, so I think I'm ready to go. Great. I will be observing you managing the shift in the areas that we talked about yesterday. Remember to use good problem-solving techniques and make adjustments as needed. I will be recording my observations on this form and then we can talk about it at the end of your shift. Great. Thanks, Betty. I'm really looking forward to managing the shift today. That's why I work so hard through the program, so really hope I do well. I know you will. Betty did a good job preparing Adam for the shift verification. Another important responsibility you have as the coach is to prepare your trainees for the basic shift management class. Meet to discuss the pre-work and talk about the objectives of the course. Then, schedule a meeting after the course to review what the trainee learned and the action plans they developed. This is a critical time for the trainee. They come back from class really excited about what they can do. 
help them apply this excitement as they continue their work in the restaurant. You have just seen how to coach a trainee through each MDP topic, from the initial meeting all the way through to verification. The coach guide will give you specific details about each workbook topic. Each section of the coach guide corresponds to a workbook in the trainee's binder, so you can move through the guide right along with the trainee. As you saw in the examples, coaches are supportive and encouraging throughout the program. They make sure to schedule time to meet with and coach the trainee. They also schedule the trainee's time to complete all of the training activities. This sets up the trainee and the restaurant for success. So there you have it. With a little prep work and your coach guide, you are going to be great. Let's review what we talked about. The shift management program is made up of several MDP sections that the trainee will work through with you as the coach. They will also take a serve safe course and attend BSM class. The coach guide is aligned with the MDP and classroom sessions and contains the meeting schedules and outlines to prepare. It also contains answers to exercises and assessments. Use it to review and answer the trainee's questions for each workbook and class and verify that they can apply what they learned on the job. Remember that the coach guide has the tools you need to coach a shift manager trainee from start to finish. Becoming a shift manager requires hard work, so make sure that the trainees have sufficient time to complete each MDP module. Support them through coaching. Put it all together and you'll get well-trained shift managers that deliver great QSC and really wow our customers. Good luck and have fun!